Looking at the outline on slide 57, we now turn to covariates added to the model. Covariate effects on the transition probabilities. We're going to start with the regular LTA and then turn to RI LTA and compare the results. Here is a uh, model diagram for three time points with an X variable that is added. And I think it's important to uh, distinguish between three types of models. The first one being C1 regressed on X. So X has an influence only on the starting point of the process and only an indirect effect therefore uh, to, uh, on, on C2 and C3. Uh, it, this model really as it's drawn <coughs> corresponds to the second type C1 to C3 regressed on X. And I'm going to call that the main effect model and contrast that with an interaction model that we're going to take a look at in detail. And it's actually the model that's shown in the user's guide for M plus in example 8.14. But I don't think one should jump straight to that model, but instead first look at these two models and then compare all of them using a likelihood ratio chi-square difference testing before the interpretations start. So looking at C1 on X, so that's covariate influencing the starting point. I think it's a good model to use as a baseline model. You include X, but you don't need necessarily include all the effects that X could have. So C on X is then a multinomial logistic regression because C1 is nominal. And as usual, the last class is the reference class. So the probability that C1 is in a certain class R, lowercase r, is the exponent of the intercept plus slope times x for category R divided by those exponents for all of the different classes where the last one is 1 due to a and b both being 0 and e to the power of 0 being 1. The uh, slope here is then significant because e to the power of that slope represents the ratio uh, of odds, an odds ratio. It's the ratio of the odds of being in class 1 given x relative to being in class r, the last class, for a certain x value divided by the same odds, the same ratio, for another x value minus 1. So you have a one unit change. For instance, x equals 1 versus x equals 0 for a binary x like poverty. So you have this odds for x equals 1 divided by the odds for x equals 0. And that ratio of odds becomes an odds ratio. Here I just restate those two bullets and look at the output that we get from M plus where you have under categorical latent variables a regression of C on poverty and there are two such slopes those are the B coefficients because the last B is zero. When we give the point estimate this loaded value and it's standard error but then we don't give the ratio of estimate standard error because that would imply that we except using a symmetric confidence interval. Instead, we can use a non-symmetric confidence interval that uh, we describe how to compute in the technical part. Here is the, the um, confidence interval, and since that interval does not include one, we can say that the odds ratio estimate 8.1 is significant. Likewise, we have class two, uh, influenced by poverty, that odds ratio, oh, sorry, that odds ratio, yes, is a um, 1.88, whereas that one is not significant because it spans one, confidence interval spans one. And you find these results <coughs> in the output under the heading logistic regression odds ratio results. Now looking at the main effect model, the sec second model, you have then x influencing all three latent class variables. 
specified simply as C1 to C3 on X and C2 on C1 and C3 on C2. Number three, the uh, more complex model is the interaction model, which you recognize from user's guide 8.14. So here you have then the influence from X on C2, that is C2 regressed on X, is C1 specific. You have this broken arrow showing that C1 influences this slope. That is, you have an interaction between X and C1. Same thing, the regression of C3 on X uh, varies, that slope varies across the C2 classes. So we're saying we have a C1 specific C2 on X and a C2 specific C3 on X. So that's the more complex model, which you don't, don't always need. Here's what it looks like in M plus logit formulation. Main effect model and interaction model. C1 and C2. And we have this logit table that we show in the user's guide at the end of chapter 14. Here, with the addition of influence from X. In the uh, main effect model, the influence of X on the C2 variable is the same irrespective of the starting class for in both cases. The effect varies depending on the C2 class, class 1, G1, class 2, G2. In the interaction model, however, C1 specific C2 on X, then the G slopes vary across the C1 classes. So the effect on C2 depends on where you started. Same thing for uh, C2 class 2. Those effects vary. And in all cases, uh, we compare to the last class as the default in M+. Now, turning then to odds ratios for the transitions, we note then as in the technical part, that each row represents a regression with a nominal dependent variable. You have three categories here for C2. And plus modeling using the last class as the reference class. So let's take a look at how you in would interpret G21 here, that slope. So we look at row 1 and that expression A2 plus B21 plus G21X. It's the log of the odds of probability of C2 being in class 2 given the first row in X relative to C2, C2 being in class 3, the last class, for that row in X. Now we're going to consider the ratio of this odds for X equals 1 and X equals 0 corresponding to poverty. The log of this odds ratio is G21. Because when you compare x equals 1 with x equals 0, the a2 plus b21 terms cancel out. That is, you know, when x equals 0, this term doesn't exist. You have a2b21. And ratio of odds, log of a, of a ratio is the log of 1 divided by the log of the other. So the a2 plus b21 term cancels out. But that's a lot of technical stuff. But that means that exponent of G21 is an odds ratio that describes the effect of X on the odds of being in C2 equals 2 versus C2 equals 3 for C1 equals 1. So in the main effect model, this odds ratio effect of X is the same for all rows, for all classes of C1. And the odds ratio is shown under the heading logistic regression odds ratio results. Now, in many cases, you would want to compare to the last class. For instance, in the reading example where you have, um, at, at the last two time points, that is uh, fall and spring of grade one, you want to look at the odds of compared to ending at the best class, class three, at the end of spring. But in other cases, it's, that's perhaps not best most interpretable way of looking at things. So once again, 
we have this expression and I'm, this is just repeating what I said on the previous page c2 equals 2, c2 equals 3, for x equals 1 same thing for x equals 0, that's the odds ratio but instead of using the last class as reference c2 equals 3 that is transitions are often more easily understood by using the diagonal that is the stayer class as a reference which for the first row would be c2 equals 1 and the diagonal here is what we're going to consider. So that's uh, instead c2 equals 2 uh, given c1 equals 1 divided by c2 equals 1 here instead of 3 up there in both the numerator and the denominator. So instead of using the last class as reference, transitions are often more easily understood by using the diagonal and then you have a logit pattern like this that is you put the zeros on the diagonal instead of in the last column and the reference class for each row of course has odds ratio 1 because both the numerator and denominator odds are 1 you divide in the numerator and the denominator is the same so so here's what it looks in uh, a real example then this is for uh, model 3 and run 6 on slide 67 run 6 and uh, here we compare poverty equals 1 with poverty equals 0 for regular LTA with C1 C4 on poverty so now we're going to take a look at an odds ratio and you notice then the feature of 1's on the diagonal so we're abandoning the M plus default and automatically M plus does this reparameterization and we can consider for instance this odds ratio and its 95% confidence interval which does not include 1 so it's a significant odds ratio 0 0.305 and the interpretation is the odds of transitioning to the second class this class relative to staying in the first class is 0 0.305 times lower the odds is 0 0.305 times lower for pov equals 1 than for pov equals 0 and significantly so so the odds ratio is 0 0.305 and here is the confidence interval taken from up here so we're saying that the odds is 0 0.305 lower the odds ratio is 0 0.305 significantly less than 1 and this is tra transitioning from C1 to C2 so the odds of transitioning to the second class which you want to see between fall kindergarten and spring kindergarten that odds is much lower for children from poverty households than for non-poverty households so that makes substantive sense so this is given automatically in the output under the heading covariate effects on transition probability odds ratios so that's a new feature in 8.6 which we felt we needed to add given many questions about how to to think about the effects of covariates on transitions transition probabilities and we're going to talk this through in more detail in outputs 5 and 7 for this web talk in the next segment.